Well, it's great to be here today. Uh, my name is Bob Garcia, and uh, I'm with Lean Plum. And if you're not familiar with Lean Plum, Lean Plum is a integrated mobile marketing platform that helps brands drive mobile app engagement and ROI. Uh, before I joined Lean Plum, I spent several years at Urban Airship, and I've worked with several tech companies over the years, including Netscape, Macromedia, and a whole bunch of others. I'm really uh, passionate about building great products that drive customer experience. And I'm super excited to have AJ joining me today. Thanks. So let me hand it over to you to do an intro. Cool. Hi, my name is AJ Aurora. I run the product organization at Imager, and that includes product, design, and data. Um, most recently, I actually just joined Imager a month ago. Uh, before that, I spent six and a half years at Amazon. I was running the product organization for Audible, which is their audiobook division. Super excited to be here. Thank you. Cool. So, uh, AJ, for those folks that aren't familiar with Imager, and I'm sure there's just a handful of them, if there are any, uh, can you tell us a little bit about Imager, the product, what it does, and how, you, uh, how you're kind of crushing it in the market? <laughs> yeah, sure. So, um, Imager turns out to be one of the largest destinations on the internet. Every month, we're serving 150 million users who come to us to find memes and GIFs, as well as like really heartwarming stories that are all crafted around photographs and images. The startup actually founded six years ago in Ohio. We've moved over to the financial district in uh, San Francisco. Cool. And how long have you uh, had a mobile app? Yeah, it's actually quite recent. So it's only been about six months since uh, we, we've started building our own mobile apps. So it's been an amazing journey. Wow. And what kind of growth have you seen since you launched that? Yeah, so our mobile apps are, um, it's amazing because what happens is, you know, you build this product that, you know, started off in 2009, it was very desktop centric and what we try to do is not basically recreate the experience and we, you know, we look at mobile, we started from the ground up and what we're seeing is that our, our mobile users are super engaged. What we're seeing is they're, they're opening the app three times a day, they're using the app four hours per week, so it's like super heavy engagement on mobile. So, so three times per day? And in four hours per week. That's pretty amazing statistics. Thank you. So you've been with the company how long? It's been a month today. So today is my uh, <laughs> one month anniversary. Can you tell us a bit about like how your first month has gone, what you've seen and what your initial reactions are in terms of uh, you know, your, your focus? Absolutely. So I think you know, um, having this opportunity is kind of like a retrospective on, on your first month. And so I've been focusing really on, on three areas. So as a product, uh, product leader, what you want to be is um, really good at communication, you want to be good at connecting the dots, and you want to be you know, a focal point within the organization. The only way you can do that is by you know, understanding who everyone is in the organization, connecting the dots. So I've been spending a lot of time to understand our team. The next thing we've been focusing on is around data. It turns out that Imager has eight different data repositories. We're collecting over 30 billion events every month. 30 billion? Yeah. You walk into our office and there's nothing but, you know, lined uh, graphs all over the wall. And, um, you know, when you, everyone says they're like data centric and, you know, organizations say that, you know, we're very data centric, but until you actually arrive and kind of pull back the sheets, you actually don't know what that means. Right. And so one of the things that I've been focusing on is like, as a new person, I look at uh, a spike and I'm like, hey, is that good? Is that bad? Why did that spike? And um, something that's a little bit scary is that when you get a response like, oh, don't worry about that, AJ, you know, um, we don't really trust that number. So, you know, uh, one of the first things we've been doing this first month is like, look, what data do we trust? What do we not trust? What is a source of truth? Because nothing is worse than collecting data that's just not accurate or people don't trust. Right. So with all this data, like, how are you harnessing this to drive, like, engagement and kind of retention of users? Because you've obviously promoting the app to drive downloads, but what do you do, you know, after the fact? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, one of the key insights that we picked up at, at Amazon was like, look, you just cannot look at averages. So, you know, uh, immediately we was like, we don't look at average. We look at cohorts. So, you know, for us, every customer is unique. We treat them like snowflakes. And so the way we think about it is like, look, a customer came or a, a user came to us through this journey. We don't know much about them, but we can infer a bunch of things. And thanks to like technologies like deep linking, you know, we can tell uh, a user saw a cat GIF on Facebook, 
click through on an iPhone 6 on the Verizon network, and what we're trying to do is like take our experiences and customize it as much as possible. We don't want to treat everything as just an average. And so, you know, one day we'd love to get so that every experience is customized, but right now we're just like, we're happy with like sticking with the cohorts and making the experience for like large groups of user is, users are as seamless as possible. So about your users, your audience for your, for your product, you've got, you know, creators, you've got consumers. Tell me more about your audiences of your, uh, in the community around your, your, your app. Yeah, yeah, so that's like a really strategic question that um, we debate a lot internally. Like, you know, who is your audience? And um, I step back and I, I, I revert back to some frameworks we picked up at Amazon. Um, one of the frameworks at Amazon, you know, they don't get enough attention for this framework, which is called the flywheel. So, you know, the flywheel at Amazon is something like, you know, I'm gonna simplify it, but like, look, if you have greater selection, that will drive more customers. And more customers will drive greater volumes, greater volumes drives down the price, greater uh, price reduction drives more customers, and everything kind of feeds upon each other, right? It's so, a great concept, the flywheel. Yeah, and so like, you know, what we do at Imager is like, hey, what is our flywheel? How does it work together? And so like, this is how we think about it. We are the source for the most entertaining content. And the way we're gonna do that is just drive more entertaining content. And so, you know, the more users who come to us to see this great stuff, the more likely they're gonna like contribute to the, the content the community. And so we actually think of both these customers or these, these users as like the content creators as well as the content consumers. Wow, and then you've got a relationship with the other social channels. Exactly. So tell me more about like how you interface and interplay with like Facebook or Instagram or the other. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely an ecosystem. And, and the way we think about it is like this is an ecosystem we're still trying to figure it out in the sense that um, everything is dynamic everything is changing what we're seeing is that you know our, our community loves to be the, the tastemakers and the trendsetters and so they're finding some great stuff on, on Imager they're sharing it with their, their communities which is driving more people to check us out directly cool and in terms of like the, the main kind of demographic of your product is there kind of a Certain cut of audience, Abs men, women, no, absolutely, absolutely. So um, you know, I, 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 it's really when I introduce myself and I say, "Hey, I work for a startup called Imager." It's it's, it's a binary reaction. Never heard of them, or like, "Oh my god," and that <laughs> "Oh my god" t uh, tends to come from uh, the audience that we currently skew towards, which is like young male millennials. Cool. And from an app experience perspective, like, what do you have in mind? You know, you've obviously been doing the desktop for a long time. The app is relatively new. Yeah. It's probably like you know a lot of you know opportunities. How are you starting to prioritize? Are you thinking about testing? Like how do you think about you know messaging and building engagement, kind of you know to, to drive more value for your users? You no, know, I'm I'm super glad you talked about like hey engagement and retention, and you didn't talk about growth. I feel like you know the the, the hot topic that everyone's talking about is growth and growth hacking. And the truth of the matter is, I think for most organizations, your biggest lever is around engagement and retention. And so um, the, we're spending most of our time on that. You know, we're trying to like, optimize our funnel. We're trying to make sure that you know, it's very, it makes sense. We're coming in with like, clean eyes. We're doing a lot of design reviews. We're thinking about you know, a person comes into our app. Are we communicating the right way? Are we like, we take for granted things like favoriting and upvotes. And you know, we're, we're, we're just questioning all the first principles and looking at a full perspective from, from the eyes of a new customer. Well, that's cool. So you've got you know, long time customers, you've got new customers you're bringing in. How are you thinking about, you know, maintaining that loyalty and engagement with existing customers who are certain, used to a certain UI, UX versus kind of new customers coming in? Is that something that's kind of on your radar? I've seen oh, some, some apps really hit the mark or miss the mark with that. Yeah, so that is one thing um, coming into to Imager is like I'm walking in with my eyes wide open, you know. We've got this audience, it's very passionate, you know, we've grown a pretty sizable base, it skews towards a certain demographic. So like you want to question certain decisions that we've made, right? Things like, hey, we've got a dark theme, yet our user research suggests that, hey, that alienates a certain segment. Hmm. So what do we do? And so we haven't cracked it yet, but I do know this is what we're thinking about we are going to take our community with us. You know, nothing's more frustrating to like wake up in the morning and the app updated overnight and you can't find the app or like the theme is different. And so, um, you know, for us, it's very much like taking the community along with us. It just it. breaks that expectation. You gotta be really careful about that. Absolutely. That's really smart. So in terms of like, you know, low hanging fruit, any kind of uh, insights or special kind of things that are going to be happening around Imager the next few days or weeks? <laughs> 
So I'm not going to break uh, any secrets, but I will say that uh, I tried. <laughs> April Fools is a big, a big day uh, at, at Imager, and so look to see some exciting things. We're having a party tonight to, to celebrate uh, April Fools, and so we hope uh, we don't disappoint. Killer. And in terms of like your plans for like the next 12 to 18 months, how do you how do you prioritize when you've got such greenfield opportunity and such a young app with such a proven history or business with such a proven history? Well, how do you how do you do that? How do you prioritize what you're going to do first versus defer for later? Yeah, the, the beauty is once you dive into the data, what we're seeing is that, you know, our users are spending a lot of time in two areas. They're spending a lot of time looking at the most viral content, the stuff that's trending and the stuff that's hot. And there's a, uh, another seg sub, uh, segment that's looking at like the newest stuff, you know, the tastemakers, like what's coming in. The sad part is that is just the tip of the iceberg. We have like so much content. And mm. so what we're trying to think about is like, we've got this great data, how do we surface the right content to the folks that are going to enjoy it the most? And so that's a huge opportunity for us, you know, building out the data team, understanding what, what uh, our users like and how to surface that content in a meaningful way. Cool. So you're trying to identify content that plays with certain audiences or how much, you know, user defined experiences are you also serving up as well in terms of preferences? Is that something, yeah. is that part of your plans? It absolutely is, it absolutely is. It's like, you know, the best apps get smarter. You know, the more you use it, they become magical. You know, these are the apps that like, you know, they, they, they listen and they watch, you know, man, this is like, this, this user is coming in, you know, for quick um, moments every day. This, this, this user really enjoys this type of content. And so like, how do you make the app magical? And that's an area that we're absolutely focusing on. And then with the app and the desktop, it's like obviously parallel experiences, similarities, differences. Are you seeing kind of uh, an emergence kind of, of a different user behavior through the app than you are on desktop? Or are they very similar? Yeah, so our, what we're seeing is that, you know, there are certain products out there that were meant for mobile. And this is something I learned at, at Audible, right? So we're an audiobook company. You know, I was like the first product manager in there and, you know, building out their mobile apps. And what we saw was that, like, wow, you've got some products that become slightly better with mobile, but then there's some, there, there's some product and experiences that just, like, become fundamentally different. Right. And so, you know, the ability to take your audiobook library with you on every mobile app is, like, it was a game changer for us then. And we're seeing the same thing here at Imager, right? So it's like, you have a couple minutes of downtime. You're waiting for, waiting for um, a meeting to start. You're, you're, you're just trying to kill a little bit of time. You open the app, you get a quick fix of happiness, um, and then you go back onto your day. So what we're trying to do is optimize for these mobile moments. How do we make the app super fast? How do we optimize for all different you know, data and network types and uh, really go back to basics in some of these cases? And so how are you, are you seeing a shift of audience consumption kind of from desktop to mobile, or is it kind of just two different worlds emerging? Yeah, no, so um, the first wave was very much so of like the folks that were um, hardcore imager on the desktop. We've seen a lot of them transition to mobile and they use both, right? So, you know, that was the first wave. But for us, the real opportunity is to introduce users that have never experienced imager before and they're discovering us for the first time on mobile. So, you know, in some respects, we've got two audiences. We've got the audience that remembers us, remembers us from our desktop days and remembers like how things work. And then we have a new uh, an audience that is just like, hey, this is the first time I've seen Imager. And so they don't understand that, you know, there's some of the, some of the um, lingo. They don't understand some of the, the techniques we've used in the past. So it's, it is a very fine balance and something that uh, we're, we're playing with right now. That's amazing. Um, let's see if I missed anything here. Any, uh, what do you, if there's any questions from the audience that we have uh, that we can take on for, for AJ or me? Not sure if we're equipped for that, but if anybody wants I, to. I think I see a, a hand right there. So the question is, what percentage of the audience is on mobile, and where do you see that going? Great question. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So we look at that metric uh, regularly. What we're seeing is that now, um, mobile views have far exceeded desktop. We're seeing a lot more consumption on mobile. You know, we're betting on mobile big time. And so, um, yeah, we, we believe uh, Imager is a product that just goes perfect on mobile. And so that's where we're definitely investing a lot of time and energy. Do you see any differences between iOS and Android users? Yeah, you know, so it's, uh, it's something that I'm getting used to. We're seeing a lot more users on Android than iOS. And it's something that, um, you know, my, my previous company, we saw the opposite. And so, um, 
Yeah, no, uh, I'm a huge fan of both platforms. I carry uh, one phone in each pocket. I've got my Android on this pocket, <laughs> and I've got my iOS here. And so, um, yeah, I use Show both. of hands of how many people do that as well. Anybody in the audience? Let me see it. Got a I few people? A lot. Absolutely. Very right cool. on. I've yet to do that. I need to step up. There's a question in the front row. So the question is, uh, with the question, if I, if I heard you correctly, was uh, how are you attracting new users on mobile for people who have never heard of Imager? Is that correct? Okay. Yeah, so inherently, we make a product that is snackable and shareable. And so for us, that's like an important tactic, right? And so what we want to do is we want to surface the world's most entertaining information, uh, uh, content, and we want to make it easy for people to share it on their other networks. And that, in turn, drives more people to, to explore Imager for the first time. They are, absolutely. So the question again was? Oh, they're, they're web-based networks. Oh, web-based networks. Yep. Okay, you got a question in the middle, sir? So you have one phone in each side of your pocket. I do. What difference do you see between Android users over iOS, and are you adapting the uh, features, or are you keeping the uh, features that are So the question so, was, with two phones in your pocket, you know, if I get you right, um, or what differences do you see in the audiences, and what trends are you seeing? How do you, how do you adapt to it? How do you adapt to the two platforms? Yeah, so I want to avoid any kind of uh, religious war, so I'm not going to pick a favorite, <laughs> but I will so, answer the second part of your question, which is like, the way we think about it is that, you know, when new users um, come onto your app, there's like certain expectations. So it's like really important for us to keep um, you know, the operating system in mind, the, the patterns in mind. And so what we try to do is we really try to optimize for the platform um, to make sure that the, the onboarding experience is, is seamless. So we keep a lot of the patterns. We, you know, we've memorized the, the, the human interface guidelines for both platforms, and it's, it's very important to us. So uh, that's first. And then we, of course, um, try to maintain um, consistency in the features. Because you might be an iOS user today, but you might be Android tomorrow. So we want to make sure that that uh, cohesion um, uh, persists. Great question. Oh, got one over here. Yes. So the question is about how do you, you know, carry your community forward, and what have you done to execute against doing that? Okay. How do you involve the community in the changes you're making? That's yeah. a great question. So it's not something that I've had to um, experience here at Imager, but I've, you know, six and a half years of experience of uh, updating the, the Audible app. And uh, what I will say is that you know, surprises, surprises to your users is what really triggers um, the challenges, right? So like, what you want to do is avoid surprises at all costs. And so now, how do you do that, right? And so the key is when you introduce a new feature, if the, you know, what, what happens now with all these apps that are automatically updating overnight is like they might be in an exact moment. And so when you know, the, the, the user wakes up in the morning, if that's different, it's off-putting. And so the, the concept of basically coaching them into the new experience, showing them, hey, we have a new feature, you might want to try this out. And slowly, it might take a little bit more time, but it tends to, um, you bring the community with you and it avoids these ma uh, massive backlash. And so that's something that you know, has worked with us um, at, at Audible, and I, I quite foresee that at Imager, which is just such a community-based um, product, it's, uh, it's something that we're going to bring the community with us. Yeah, related to that, we had talked about the possibility of testing new features to a subset of your audience. Yeah, is absolutely. That, no, and it's something we're, we're absolutely investing in. So on the web, you know, A-B frameworks and the concept of dialing up is something that's been uh, tried and proven. Um, and we're doing the same thing with mobile. And you know, Lean Plum has a great platform for A-B testing on um, native apps, and it's something we're absolutely um, moving forward with as well. So you could actually do that feature rollout incrementally, do a defined audience before committing it to, to everybody. Exactly. Really. Ensure it's going to work. It's a great question. Anybody else? Right there. Yeah. 
So Imager focuses so much on delights. What would you go back and, and teach the Amazon team was a question. Great question. Oh, uh, wow. I don't want to get myself in trouble. <laughs> but um, I will say um, bringing personality is just a no regret move. Um, and oh, I dropped it. So, um, you know, people uh, and, and consumers appreciate a personality. And I'm seeing some great things from Amazon, like, you know, the work they're doing around Echo. It's really delightful and playful. And I do believe that uh, personality um, and products go a long way. And uh, I do think Imager is doing a great job in, in that space. But uh, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of lessons a lot of companies can learn from bringing personality directly into the product. So bringing personality to product is a key component to winning at Imager. Exactly. Other companies should embrace. That's great advice. Any more questions? There's one over there. Uh, hey, um, I wanted to understand your approach on engagement. Uh, specifically, do you see any cohorts based on engagement? And do you see any plateaus uh, based on engagement from these cohorts? And how do you approach that, you know, one app to move them on, right? Yeah, yeah. So for us, engagement, it follows a pattern, right? So. The sooner you, you get your user to understand the product, like the first, you know, I will say every day is critical. So for us, you know, engagement starts the second you onboard the user. And so it's like, it's a race against the clock because inevitably, you know, your users are, are, are churning away. So every um, investment you make on like the first day, the second day are paying dividends that are gonna pay off later uh, down the pipeline. So for us, it very much is around focusing on the first couple of days, first couple of weeks, because we know that if we've really convinced you to how to understand our app and how to use us as a daily habit during your first week, you're gonna stay with us for a very long time. So it's a, it's a technique where it's like, don't worry about these, you know, focus more on the early users and good things will come. Have you uh, organized your team at all around you know, the, the activation, engagement, onboarding. That's exactly kind of. what we've done, actually. And so, um, yeah, in the first 30 days, we've actually done uh, a bit of a um, uh, org change around product development. And so, you know, uh, we have an activation team, we have an engagement team. And so, you, right out of the park, like, it, they're very focused on different aspects. They're full stack. They have their own designers. They have their own developers. It's like um, they have their dedicated product manager. So we, we are absolutely thinking about that. So the way the product is organized is organized to solve for that, that, that yeah. opportunity. Absolutely. Do you see enough companies doing that? Um, you know, so we, we had made that transition at Audible. Um, I'm seeing it happen here. And, you know, I do a lot of reading. So I, I definitely see that as very much um, a common trend. Um, maybe a talk for another time is around reorganizing um, your, your dev uh, organization. It's not easy. Um, there's, we have many scars from, from this. And... Um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's a change that you have to take very carefully and, and loop uh, everyone involved, because it is, it is quite a change. So just, you know, growth hacking has been kind of the buzz and talk. Retention hacking now is, is catching up. Uh, I, would, I would place my money on retention hacking any day. Gotcha. Any other question here? Counterintuitive. Counterintuitive. Yeah, I think, you know, as that a, was, I just want to repeat the question for the audience. If you could say it again. Yeah. So patterns you may have. Yeah, so things that are counterintuitive. In fact, we were just joking yesterday at Imager. The one thing that's certain is our hypotheses as product managers are usually wrong. And so we have like come to accept that. And so that seems counterintuitive to you know, your, your product organization. But that's why A-B testing, that's why dialing up is so important. It's a great point about A-B testing. Great. Oh, last question. Yep, missed somebody? Oh, shout it out. <laughs> Can you share a little bit about your business model? Yeah, so for us, you know, what we're focusing on is uh, driving value through um, engaging experiences. So for us, we're still very much in um, building an audience, building an audience that comes to us every single day. You know, what's really unique about Imager that we, we don't talk about enough is like, this is a company that has bootstrap in their culture. Right, so Imager went from zero to 100 million users a month on seven dollars. 
Despite raising $40 million from Andreessen, we still spend uh, the money like it's our very own. We're very much about building a long-term sustainable business. And so for us, it's about we believe that we build uh, a product that's sticky and is engaging, and uh, that's our main focus right now. Well, great question. Well, hey, thanks everybody for the audience participation. Really made the panel a lot more engaging. Thank Absolutely. you so much, AJ, for, you, for your great insights. Great. Thank you. And thanks for... Great show.